So we'll continue talking about the phosphorus cycle. Um, so the last video we talked about the nitrogen cycle. Now the difference between the two, obviously it's a different uh, element on the periodic table, um, but also uh, the steps that are involved in the nitrogen cycle are a lot more complex and you need to know the steps, whereas in the phosphorus cycle, not so much. The phosphorus cycle is more focused on um, the actual movement of phosphorus and actually the more it's a more overall holistic look at how phosphorus affects the ecosystem and what our role is in that. So the phosphorus cycle, again, describing the movement of phosphorus in an ecosystem, um, it is a very essential nutrient um, and it is required for many, many molecules. So even if we look at ourselves, um, our DNA and RNA has a phosphate sugar backbone, um, which means you need a phosphorus there. ATP, which is the main currency, if you want to use that of energy, eight, just in the name itself, adenosine triphosphate. There are three phosphate groups that are found on the ATP. And the name itself, phospholipids, um, in our cell membrane, they incorporate phosphorus molecules um, as part of that structure. So phosphorus is a really, really important uh, nutrient that is required for all organisms. Unlike the nitrogen cycle, and the nitrogen, it is a lot harder to obtain. Nitrogen is readily available, 80% um, of your atmospheric air is nitrogen, so it can be easily converted into the right forms of nitrogen. Whereas phosphorus, and if we go in, this is sort of an overview of what the phosphorus cycle is, and it's very similar to what the nitrogen cycle is. The, the problem with the phosphorus, of the phosphorus cycle is that phosphorus is actually, uh, it's trapped inside rocks. And the only way you can release this phosphorus is by breaking down these rocks. Now, the natural breakdown of rocks, erosion or weathering, is really, really, really slow. It happens, and it, it's sort of a gradual, slow release of phosphorus, but it's not always the fastest way to get enough phosphorus um, into the atmosphere. And what's actually happening now is there's a lot of phosphorus mining going on, uh, which, can, which is actually increasing the amount of phosphorus that we're able to get, but also then then we're taking too much phosphorus out of the out of the out of the ecosystem and the and the earth itself, uh, which means we're actually depleting, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. And and just as we've seen with the nitrogen cycle, you have human activities that can affect the phosphorus cycle as well. The biggest, unlike the nitrogen cycle, which is more readily available, obviously. Phosphorus cycle is more observed in agriculture, and it's a very important component for farmers because um, they need to make sure that the fertilizers that they're using are high phosphate used fertilizers. Um, so this is something that uh, agriculture, um, especially in the agriculture world, uh, farmers, um, they need to make sure that their farms are receiving the right amount of phosphorus that is required. Uh, now, phosphorus in the uh, phosphorus cycle is added or removed from this cycle uh, by humans in two ways. So it can be added um, if we add or mine for phosphorus, or if we're breaking down rocks for the specific um, for the specific purpose of releasing phosphorus, uh, we can use this phosphorus um, to create fertilizers that can then be transported and can be used in the field. So we're actually delivering phosphorus from a natural um, uh, deposit in, in the rocks and converting it and, and, and distributing it within the, as a fertilizer. Uh, and it can also be removed. So as phosphorus is taken up by plants, it gets assimilated, so it gets used by the plants. Those plants will be harvested and they'll be carried away. So what you're actually doing, the, the actual action of, of harvesting will get rid of the phosphorus because as a plant or a fruit or a, or a vegetable gets harvested, it gets taken away. It's most likely going to be eaten by some other organism or it will be broken down and it will be reduced. And it will, if it's if it's being if it's an organic material, you can use it as a compost. And one of the reasons why the the promotion of compost is really important is that you're naturally recycling those nutrients that are found in the uh, organic materials. So if you if you have some material, uh, if you have say carrots and, and peppers at home that, uh, that are being thrown out into and you have a compost, you can throw in the compost and as those as the carrots and the, and the peppers break down, they will release the nitrogen and phosphate that are trapped so that the new, um, uh, the new soil that's being produced has an abundant amount of nitrogen and phosphate so when you plant something new it can use that material uh, for further plant growth.
Now, a nutrient's turnover rate, and turnover rate is sort of a it's a it's a general term that we use, um, but it's the amount of uh, the amount of uh, nutrients that are moved from one stock to another. So, a turnover rate in terms of farming and agriculture could mean how much harvest you get from a specific amount of field or a specific amount of seeds. Um, and in this case, um, the turnover rate when we look at uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, the turnover rate is a lot lower for phosphorus than it is for nitrogen, and it sort of makes sense because nitrogen is readily available in the atmosphere whereas phosphorus is trapped in rocks so there's an extra process that needs to happen and often it's a mechanical process and this mechanical process that occurs um, is required to break down the rocks uh, so that phosphorus can be uh, that can be released whereas nitrogen is always found in the atmosphere um, and it can be converted by the bacteria that are readily available in the soil And phosphate is sort of reliant on weathering. So the effect of, unless you're mechanically mining for it, so you're taking drills in to break down the rock, the natural process is is look is waiting for um, erosion to occur. And if you're not getting a lot of water, if it's a drought condition, you might have, there won't be a lot of erosion going on. And the weathering process gets slowed down because of the environment that uh, the organisms might be. It is possible to get soil sample kits, and this is something that I have for the uh, uh, for the axolotl aquarium um, that can test out what's available in the water, what nutrients are in there, and you know, in in my kit, I've got tests for nitrates, tests for nitrites. I believe there's a pH test and a, and a K test, so the potash, um, and I have I believe there's a phosphorus test in there as well, and it can it can just give you an idea of how much of the material there is. And if you have something to compare it to, you can then compare and see, okay, is this a, the right amount that you need for the specific organism? So for the axolotls, they have a specific range that they can have nitrates and a specific range in the pH and, and, for, and for phosphorus. And it's the same thing for all sorts of plants and other organisms as well. Um, what's happening, and this is one of the things, and we've, uh, we, we will talk about, I believe we'll talk about overfishing um, in the next unit, um, but one of the things happening, because our technology is so readily available that we can mine for phosphates now, um, what's happening is that the, uh, the mining of the phosphates is actually causing the actual stock of phosphates to go down. So the amount of phosphate that we actually have um, is actually being reduced. So the stock that we have, natural stock that we have, is going uh, up, down a lot faster than it should be. And we don't have an idea of what effects this will have if we lose all of the phosphorus, the natural phosphorus in on the earth. And at some point, this will be where the scientists have to kick in and find out, okay, is it possible to create synthetic phosphorus that the plants can actually use? Um, and, and and what's gonna and the first thing that will happen that will be affected if we if we don't have enough phosphorus we don't have enough fertilizer, um, which unless we can figure out another way to promote the growth of plants, um, the the less you, the, the 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 because the usage of fertilizer is decreasing it will then have an effect on the yields that are being produced from farms. So for, for a certain farm, they need a certain amount of phosphorus that is delivered to those plants um, by humans. And if we don't have enough of this phosphorus, it will then cause um, uh, agricultural production to go down. And that's it for the, for, uh, the phosphorus cycle. It's a lot easier to understand. There isn't a lot in terms of steps that you need to know. There's, it's a more general talk about what the phosphorus cycle is and how it affects plant growth. Um, make sure you're able to answer these questions right here. And there are uh, these uh, links to other videos that you can look at. Uh, the top video, the crash course video, is, is linked on your Google Classroom. You can also take a look at the other two links as, long, uh, as, as well as um, the video to the uh, nitrogen cycle, which is on, uh, on, 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 our, on our YouTube channel.